we're going to look at the partial product multiplication strategy. With the partial product multiplication strategy, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of those factors and we're going to break down each of those factors into their parts. And then we're going to write them in their expanded form. So 37 is just 30, 3 tens, and 7 ones. 26 breaks down into 20. 20 what? Right, plus 6. And then we're still multiplying those two things together. When we're multiplying those two things together, we're going to end up with, we're going to look at the 6 first, and then we're going to distribute. We're going to use what's called the distributive property, and we have to multiply that 6 times the 7, the 6 times the 30 as well. And so that's what it is that we're going to go ahead and do. Down here, we're going to go ahead and write that first thing that I stated, where we're multiplying that 6 times the 7, so that's just part of our partial product. And then we multiply that 6 times the 30. If you think about it, and we continue there, what we haven't worked with yet is this 20. And then so as par part of our product, we're going to multiply 20 times 7. And I'll write that out right here as well. And finally, we'll multiply 20 times 30. If we now actually write out all of these products, what they're equal to, 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 30, 6 times 3 tens, that's 6 times 3, which is 18, and we have that 0 there. 20 times 7 is 140. And 20 times 30, okay, it's two zeros there. And then 2 times 3 is 6. And we made sure to line up our digits. And if these are partial products, guess what we do? That's right, we add them together. So if we carefully add them together, we'll have our product of 37 times 26. 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 4 is 16. 6, regroup the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3 plus 6 is 9. So I have that method there, partial products. Multiplication, where 37 times 26 equals 962. Now as you continue with this strategy, you might have to write out the 60 plus the 8, and the 40 plus the 3, or you might just be able to see it where you're all, okay, I'm going to start with that 3, which is worth 3 there, and I'm going to multiply it by the 8, and then the 3 times the 6 there, but that 6 is worth 60, so I go 3 times the 60. When I look at that 4 there, I know that 4 is worth 40, and I multiply it with the 8 first, 40 times the 8, and then it's 40, 40 times that 6. Oh yeah, that 6 is worth 60, so it's 40 times 60. At that point, you figure out the actual products, 3 times 8 for those partial products, 3 times 60, which is 180, 40 times 8, which is 320, and 40 times 60, I'll place those two zeros, because I'm dealing with 10 times 10, and 4 times 6 is 24. At that point, I add those together carefully. After I did all of this work, it would be a shame to add them incorrectly. So I'll do that work carefully for you. And as you see, I've come up with my solution there, 2,924, 68 times 43, equaling this product of 2,924. All right, go ahead and set this up for yourself. It's time for you to try. I've started this process for you. It's time for you to try. And go ahead and hit pause as you try this partial products and solve it completely. Right, first thing is 6 times 8, next thing is 6 times 40, and then we've got 20 times the 8, and then 20 times the 40. 
Next step is to actually solve these partial products. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 40 is 240. 20 times 8 is 160. And 20 times 40, don't get confused by that last one there, is 800. Check your partial products. Did you get 48, 240, 160, 800? Now here's the real test. Did you add them together correctly? Our product of 48 times 26 is 1,248. This method does work with larger numbers as well. And then so if you broke that 378 down, we'd have 300 plus 70 plus 8. So as you see here, as I've started this here, we start with that 6, 6 times the 8, 6 times the 70, and 6 times 300. Then we work with this 2, which is worth 20. That's why I started off with 20 times 8. Then we still need to take this 2 and multiply it by the 7 here, which is worth 70, and the 2 times the 3 here, which is worth 300. And so I'll write those out for you. 20 times 70 and 20 times 300. Just like before, our next step is to go ahead and evaluate those partial products so that we can add them together to get our solution. Started those out for you. 6 times 8, 48. 6 times 70, 420. 6 times 300, 1,800. 20 times 8, 160. 20 times, 700, times 70, that is. Place the two zeros. 1, 4. 20 times 300. 1, 2, 3, and then 2 times 3 is 6. Carefully line those up and add them. Add these partial products to get our product. Mathematicians are always looking for an easier way. I'm going to show you a simpler way to go ahead and work with this here. And you can choose which strategy and which approach works better for you. 72 can be broken down to 70 and 2. 36 can be broken down into 30 and 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a grid. Within this grid, we're going to go ahead and figure out our partial products. So if we started like with that 6 as from before, just to think about this in a similar method as from before, we're taking that 6 times the 2, which is the 12, and the 6 times the 70, 6 times the 70, and that's why we come up with 420 there. And just as before, we're taking that 30, that 3 is worth 30, times the 2, which is 60, and the 30 times the 70, which is 2,100. And at that point, we take all of those partial products, and we add them together. And then so we can align them up any which way we want, because we know that it is the commutative property of addition. 2, 2 and 6, 8, 1 more is 9, 1 and 4 is 5, we've got 2 there. So all of that there is 2,592. The other way to have done that is to have taken this here, 2,160, and just add them up right here, 2,160. 420 and 12, that's 432. And then just to go ahead and add them right there. I think that makes a little bit more sense than having to rewrite them out all like this here. Again, choose the strategy and approach that works for you. If you notice here, this is 72, right? This was 6. So 420, 12, this is our answer for 72 times 6. This right here is our answer for 72 times 30. Doesn't that look familiar? If we were to use a traditional approach, we would have taken 6 times this 72. That would have been our first answer right there. And then our second answer would have been 30 
times that 72, and then we would have added them together. It's your turn to use this partial products multiplication strategy. I've set up the grid for you for 68 times 26. You multiply them together. I'd suggest putting the answers right here. Remember, add across there, hit pause, and please do your work. Does not matter the order that you figure out these products, just as long as you figure out those products correctly. This first product is 1,200. This other product right here should have been 160. This product right here is 360, and this product right here is 48. Remember at this point, we add them across. Check your values in your tables, please. We add them across, and then so if we add them across, we've got 1,200 plus 160 is 1,360. 360 plus 48 is 408, and we make sure to line those up because we're going to just add them right there. So we get 8, 6, 7, and 1. If you notice right now, I'm working in orange over here with my traditional method. It's a method that's often taught. That times 2 is times 20. That's the step I'm on. That's why I placed a 0 there. 2 times 8 being 16. 6 regroup the 1. 2 times 6 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. Don't those two numbers look familiar? 408 right there. 1,360 right there. Oh, just like that method. We also add, and if we added them together, we get that same answer. Again, there's always more than one strategy, more than one approach to work the problem and to solve a problem. Use that strategy that works for you, or use two strategies to even check your work. That's partial products multiplication.